And now, Mystery Theater. E.G. Marshall. Lend me your fears. It happens now and then that a man will vanish without warning, disappear completely without leaving a trace. Or a man will suddenly lose his memory. His body remains, but his mind has gone. What is essential in him leaves us, and we are left perplexed, mystified, frustrated. All we have to go on is rumor, speculation, theory. And since we cannot explain it, after a while, we tend to stop thinking about it. Until it happens again to somebody else. You're back. Oh, my husband, you're back. But you won't even embrace me. Who are you? Who am I? What kind of question is that? How can you say you're my wife? We've been married for more than 15 years. No, we haven't. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that I'm not your husband. You're not my wife. I don't even know you. What's more, I'm not even standing here. How can I be? I haven't even been born yet. Our mystery drama, A Long Time to Die, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mandel Kramer. I'll be back shortly with Act One. His name is Alfred Stewart Ainsley. He's 41 years old. Average height, average weight, average looks. Nothing about him to make him memorable. Indeed, he has never in his life done anything to bring him notice from beyond the circle of his immediate family, his close friend, his rather esoteric profession. His name was in the newspaper twice. First when he was born, and then 30 years later when he was married. But right now, his name is on the front pages of newspapers in every country of the civilized world. Alfred Stewart Ainsley, quiet, unassuming, has it in his power to shake the government of the most important country in the world. And perhaps alter the very course of history. Alfred, do you want a drink of water? Water? Darling, I know this is difficult, but... Feel okay, Al? No, Jerry, he's not feeling okay. Can't you see there's obviously something wrong with him? Al, what is it? He's pale, he's sweating. Now look, Al, you're not the one who's being investigated. If you're not feeling well, we can ask for a recess. The chairman's just come in. The committee stands in order. Mr. Ainsley, we will resume with your testimony. You are still under oath. I would like to continue along a line of questioning initiated by Senator Selby. Would you turn, please, to page 684? Heard it now. Question. Is it possible that Congressman Carstairs could have forged the Secretary's handwriting? Answer, Mr. Ainsley. Senator, I would have... have ex- of news- ...more examples of both gentlemen's manuscript. Mr. Ainsley, you were given these specimens to analyze overnight, were you not? Or were you not, Mr. Ainsley? Well, you took those samples, you examined them, say yes. Um, yes. Very well. Now, are you in a better position to answer my question? Well, are you, sir? Al, Al, you told me you had studied them and come to a conclusion. Al, answer Adam's question. Counselor, is Mr. Ainsley having trouble understanding the questions? I uh, know, sir. Mr. Ainsley, it's obvious that something is troubling you. Yes, sir. Well, then suppose we take a recess, give you a chance to rest. The committee will adjourn till 3.45. Well, Al? Do you want to talk to me? I never saw that before. Hmm? Saw what? A man makes smoke. The way you make smoke. Al, are you serious? We have pipes and we put the tobacco in the pipe and that's how we smoke, but you're holding something. What's that called? All right. All right. I can play along if that's how you want it. This is called a cigarette. 
Cigarette? You mean you never heard of it? No. Oh. Well, that's odd. Right here, in your pocket. Put your hand inside your shirt pocket. You have a pack of cigarettes. How long do you want to play this game? It isn't a game. Tell me what it is, then, Al. You call me Al. I'm not Al. You're not Alfred Ainsley? No. All right, who are you? My name is... Mahatwiki. Yes? In your language, it would be Running Beaver. That sounds like an Indian name. Indian. That word, Indian. Yeah, yes, yes. In this language, in your language, it would be Indian. You claim you're an Indian? Yes. Well. You don't believe me? Just tell me how you got here. I was sent to the north to scout the, uh, uh, you would call them the Iroquois. Scout? Yes, to see if we should make war. War? Make war or become allies. I was on my way home to my tribe. I was at the place where the mist covers the rocks. I walked into the mist, and there was a noise. What kind of noise? Loud thunder, a flash of lightning. It was as if someone had hit me over the head with a club. I knew nothing. Then I was sitting in a strange room in strange clothes, and strange people were talking to me on a subject I know nothing about. You claim to be an Indian. You talk about fighting and wars. Well, that would be before the white men came to this country. I've never seen men like you and these others. There is one small detail that troubles me. How does it happen you speak English? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I was returning to my people. They live near the banks of the Great River. The Great River? The Potomac. Ah. Uh-huh. As I told you, something took place in the mist. I awoke. Now, now I am in a strange place. I find that I can speak the language, but I don't know what anything means. Where is this place? Who are you? I'm your doctor, your friend. My name is Carl Stitzer. And who am I? Al Ainsley. You're a collector of and a dealer in autographs. Historical papers. You're considered one of the top experts on handwriting. I don't know what any of that is. What is it that you know how to do? To track? To scout? To hunt? All right, Al. I've gone along as far as I can. Now, let me tell you something. Your testimony can destroy Congressman Carstairs. I don't know anything about this Carstairs. If you testify that, in your opinion, Carstairs forged those papers, then not only will Carstairs be destroyed, but the principles he stands for will be discredited. You believe in what Carstairs stands for, Al. I am not Al. You're torn, Al. You don't want to examine those documents. I don't even know what documents are. Because if they are forgeries, you will put an end to Congressman Carstairs' political life. And you can't bring yourself to do that. I am a stranger in a strange land. I need a friend. You're afraid to find out if Carstairs is guilty. You can't face the consequences. When a man finds himself in such an intolerable situation, he he tries to escape. You're a doctor. In my language, that means a medicine man, a magician. You've escaped to a remote past, to a long-gone, buried, forgotten world. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. Doctor, what is it? Think, Joan. Think carefully. How long have you and Al been married? Eleven years. And how long had you known him before that? We were kids in school together back in the first grade. Then you've known him all his life? Just about. Has he ever been interested in Indians? Indians? No, not that I know of. You don't have anything in the house like, oh, handicrafts, weapons, books? That would have to do with Indians? Mm Mm-hmm. Nothing at all. Does Al have a secret life? Doctor, I'm not going to answer any more questions until you tell me what you're driving at. Well, see that he gets plenty of rest. No visitors, no excitement. And please keep in constant touch with me. Doctor, can't you tell me anything at all? No. But I do have to ask you one more question. Does he know how to shoot a bow and arrow? What kind of a question is that? Just answer it. I would say no. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe we better find out. Morning, Jerry. Doc, I've been waiting for you. Is Al dressed and ready? Now look, Doc, you've just got to talk to me. Why? Why? 
Why? Don't pretend to be living in a world of your own. You read the papers, you hear the news broadcast. Yes. Al has to testify. Yes or no. Whichever way, it no longer matters. But he can't remain quiet. He's not the only handwriting expert in the world. The committee can call another. It's too late for that now. The rumors are out. He's been bought off. He's been scared off. And both sides are under suspicion. I admit it's an unfortunate situation. Now look, look, Doc. You can maybe stall the committee another day, maybe two, maybe even through the weekend recess. But that is about as far as you can go. I'm doing the best I can. Why can't he testify? I can't tell you. You can't or you won't? Both. Now let me tell you what's going to happen. The committee has the right to assign their own doctors to examine Al. I know. Well, how much time do I have? A week? That's really stretching it. I'm ready to go with you, Doctor. Al, Al, how do you feel? Let's go, Al. Al why can't I come along? Goodbye, Jerry. A fox has been by here. Is that so? Mm -hmm. You can see his tracks. Well, I can't. This valley looks familiar, and yet so strange. Where are all the animals? There's no sign of deer or wolf. Where are the animals? If you really are running beaver, you wouldn't believe what's happened. Now, in this box is a bow. A bow? Yes. Here's the bow, the strings, the arrows. I've never seen a bow like this one. How strong. And these arrows. I don't know the first thing about it. Is this mine? To keep? To be able to hunt with? Why don't you hit that oak tree? About 60 or 70 yards to the left? Well, that's no shot. The tree is standing still. A child could hit that tree. What's moving? Is there a rabbit or a squirrel, a hawk? No, I'm sorry. There's nothing around. All right, then. I'll put this arrow into the center of the trunk of that small tree on the right. That maple. But that's almost 150 yards. It's an ordinary shot. I'm ashamed of it. But there's nothing else. Right in the center. Well, Doctor? I don't know, Running Beaver. I don't know. How do I explain this? Someone, probably a seasoned politician, said once, when in doubt, tell the truth. That sounds great, in theory. But how would you like to have to tell this kind of truth to a sharp congressional committee? We'll have more of this kind of truth when we return shortly with Act Two. There's a beautiful stretch of countryside running along the boundaries of Washington, D.C. and Maryland. Hilly, wooded, charming. It's the site of many lovely homes. Some 500 years ago, it was just as hilly, just as charming, much more wooded, wilder, of course, filled with game, and inhabited by Indians. Honey Beaver! Honey Beaver, it's you! Stop! Ah, you, you're alive! For days, the council has been waiting for you, Running Beaver. The council? You're ill. You've just returned from a long, hard, dangerous journey. But you're the only one who could do it. Now, what what bothers you, Running Beaver? I, uh... I you, you act as if you don't even know me. I'm your friend, your blood brother, Eagle Wing. Come, we must go to the council immediately. Many days ago, the council sent Running Beaver and three companions north to the Iroquois Nation to determine peace or war. And now Running Beaver returns alone and we ask him, where are your companions? And shall the Iroquois be our friend or foe? Speak to us, Running Beaver. Running Beaver, say something. I am very tired. The important questions should not be answered by a man who needs sleep and food. Running Beaver shall return to the council after he has eaten and rested. Sit, my husband. I have meat, corn. I was so frightened. So afraid the Iroquois would kill you. Sit, rest, and, and eat. Now, I will tell you the news about the boy. The boy? Our son. He's been chosen for the Wolf Society. You always wanted that. Your mother brought him this bearskin robe. You're not eating. It's not cooked. It's the way you like it. 
Is something wrong? You don't look right. Perhaps you'd better see the medicine man. The medicine man? Red Bear. He always liked you. There is something wrong. This is not like you. Not to be hungry. To be so quiet. You're frightened. Why are you frightened? You wouldn't come to me, Running Beaver, so I've come to you. Leave us, White Swallow. Now, what nature of evil spirit is within you? Was there a spell cast upon you in the Iroquois country? I wonder if I can talk to you. You wonder? Your father was my closest friend. I seem to understand. How, I don't know, but I seem to understand this language. Is that a surprise? This is your language. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how I got here. A spell has been cast upon you. I'm sure you won't believe, but... I am not running beaver. How can that be? My name is Alfred. In your language, it would mean... a wise elf or a wise counsel. Excellent name. I come from... Well, perhaps it would be this same land, but... But I live... Or shall live hundreds of years from now. I could tell you stories of, of great things, of great ships flying through the air, of enormous buildings. I, I don't even know where to begin. It must be a time of great magic. Unbelievable magic. What a happy time that must be. I couldn't say that it is all that happy. I find that hard to believe. With all that magic. At any rate, I was going to an important meeting of the committee. Well, never mind what that means. I decided to walk to the bus instead of driving my car. I'll explain to you what they are later. There was a mist near Rockledge. And I walked into it and something... Something seemed to explode in my head. And when I walked out of it, I... I, I was in these clothes. I was somebody else. I was frightened. I began to run. And suddenly someone stopped me. Yes, Eagle Wing. He is your friend. You don't believe a word of this. How can I? You are exactly like Running Beaver. Your body is his, your voice is his. I am not Running Beaver. What am I supposed to say to the council? You will have to appear. The tribe has been waiting for days. The life of every man, woman, and child could depend on what you say. What am I supposed to say? The truth. The truth is what I just told you. Can I say that in front of the council? No. Then what can I do? Now, rest. Sleep. Sometimes the spirits speak to us in dreams. I'll need more than a dream to get myself out of this. Running Beaver? My husband? Are you awake? Hmm? Oh, what a dream. Joan, you'll never imagine... Oh, no. I'm still asleep. Running beaver. I, I... Can you eat something now? Cool. Oh, here. Wear this robe. Your mother made it. My mother? Please. Can't you tell me what's wrong? Running beaver. May I come in? Who's that? Your oldest friend. Do you mean you don't know Eagle Wing's voice anymore? Running beaver. Running beaver, you must come to the council at once. But he's not well. I know. I know he's not well, but there's trouble. Trouble? There, there's talk all over the village. Now, what happened to the three men who went with you to the Iroquois? Did you kill them? Kill them? How could he kill them? They were all his friends. What passed between you and the Iroquois chiefs? Running Beaver, you must tell him. I don't know. I don't know. I tell you, all of you gathered here. I don't know. Running Beaver, in war and peace, you've been first among us. We sent you as our ambassador to the Iroquois. We entrusted you with the lives of three of our bravest young men. Now, where are they? Their families have a right to know. Speak. Chief, I will speak for him. No one can speak for a man before the council. Not even you, Red Bear. Running Beaver is ill. What kind of illness? He has lost his memory. That's a vineyard loss of memory. Quiet! Where is my son? Where is he gone? I can't see him anywhere. Quiet! He has lost his memory? Yes. Can you cure him, Red Bear? 
I can try. You have six days. At the end of that time, Running Beaver will talk to the council or else submit to justice. Why did we come out here? I'm so cold. Where is your knife, Running Beaver? Knife? Running Beaver always carries a knife. Well, I didn't think... Give him your knife, Eagle Wing. Why do I want a knife? Eagle Wing, attack him. Attack? But everyone knows Running Beaver can't be beaten with a knife. Let's make sure. I'll only do it if he keeps his knife in a sheath. Now, you know how excited he gets even when we fight in fun. Attack him, Eagle Wing. Have your knife at the ready, but Running Beaver. Look, are you ready, Running Beaver? Now. Ah, I... What did you do that for? I... Did, did I catch you off guard? Look, I am trying to tell you people I am not... Eagle Wing, go back to the village. But I... Do as I tell you. I was once. never able to do Go that back to the village. Him. There is magic Yes. Here. Yes, I'm going. I'm going. What did I just see? You saw a man knock me down. You don't know how to fight with a knife anymore. When did I ever know how to fight with a knife? I can't believe it. I was just a quiet kid when I was in school. And I suppose you can't shoot with the bow. No. Or throw the lance. I'm trying to tell you I am not your running beaver. Then we have magic. Call it what you want. But we have trouble. As uh, chief of this council, I call upon running beaver to speak. Chief. Chief Stark Tracker. I haven't called on you, Red Bear. I called upon Running Beaver. But, Chief, the council has given you six days, Red Bear, six days to cure Running Beaver. Let me talk. Gentlemen, I don't know how to make you understand. Be quiet. No, no, no. Let him talk. But he's mad. Let us judge. I am not who you think I am. I am not Running Beaver. I told you he was mad. You say you are not Running Beaver. No, I am not. I don't know how to convince you because I don't even know how it happened myself. White Swallow, step forward. Yes? Is this man your husband? Yes. She really does... Silence! Why do you deny? Are you tired of me? Is there another woman? Oh, good Lord. You could have been living 500 years from now. You women never change. I thought you loved me. All of you, listen to me, please. I know it's hard to believe, but I am not running beaver. Who are you, then? I am a man from a time... I don't know, and it must be hundreds of years from now. Yes. Silence! 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 Spirit has captured him. This is the council. We'll have no disorder here. Running Beaver, have you anything more to say? I have plenty more to say, but I don't know how to say it. The council will retire. We shall return with our decision. Red Bear, what are they going to do with me? Well... It's not good, is it? It will depend. Depend on what? Stark Tracker is a devout believer in magic. I think he believes you. Well, then it can't be bad. But the people are angry, and three young men are missing. Probably dead. The people feel it's your fault. But... Probably the council will declare that you have been possessed by an evil spirit. It's all nonsense. I'm sure you know what you think. But you asked me what I think. What will happen? The evil spirit will have to be driven out of you. How? Or shouldn't I ask? By fire. By lance. By arrows. You mean they'll kill me? That's how we drive out the evil spirit. Is there anything I can do, Red Bear? I don't know. But I'll try to think. Running Beaver... Stand before the council. You have been ordered to report. Do you refuse? I tried to tell you. Therefore, the council has decided to drive the evil spirit out of you. No! Tell them, Running Beaver, tell them! We must have silence. Tonight, Running Beaver, the council will drive the spirit from you. Wait! He has the right to ask for judgment by combat. What are you saying? Must I remind the council of the law? Very clever, Red Bear. No one dares. Silence! Silence! Well, you've heard the challenge. Who will fight Running Beaver? Your reputation has just saved you. No one will dare to meet you. No one? No one will accept the challenge? 
Are we a tribe of trembling women? Must I, at my age, save the honor of the people? I'll fight him. Eagle Wing, you, you're his best friend. No longer. After all, he denies he's running Beaver, doesn't he? The council accepts the offer of Eagle Wing. May the one who is right win. Clear a space. Wait. The law says each contestant must fast and pray for three days. No, no, sir. Silence. We shall obey the law. We shall meet again in three days. What did you get me into? I got you three days. What good will it do me? You could learn to fight with a knife. Well, you've been a quiet, unassuming, handwriting analyst all your life. You've never so much as swatted a fly in anger. Now, suddenly, you have to fight to the death with knives, no less. And uh, how is the other fellow doing? The one who has to face the congressional committee? We'll see how it all comes out when we return shortly with Act Three. Just as telephone wires can cross when they cover great distance, so can lives when they cover great spans of time. Two such lives have been disrupted. Running Beaver, an Indian who lived 500 years ago, and Alfred Stewart Ainsley, who is a contemporary of ours. Alfred Ainsley is now talking to his lawyer. That is, his lawyer thinks it's Alfred Ainsley. We know it's Running Beaver. Al, level with me. Is this a stall? I keep telling you, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't help it. I talk to the reporters. I talk to the committee people. Nobody understands you. You keep saying you're a friend of Al Ainsley. Yes, Al. We've been friends since college. Then you should know that I am not Al Ainsley. My name is Running Beaver. I'm an Indian. I lived about 500 years ago. <sighs> I better get Doc Stitzer back here. Jerry, what are you doing here? I ordered complete rest for Al. You know what Al just told me, Doctor? He thinks he's an Indian. It happens to be true. It happens to be... Tr oh, I see. Yeah, I, I think I see. What do you think you see, Jerry? They got to you too, Doc. Who got to me? I don't know. But somebody doesn't want Al to testify. He's been bought off and so have you. Jerry, I resent the that. The two of you concocted this ridiculous... It happens to be true. Do you think that you can sell this to Senator Adams, to the committee, to the news media? I only tell you what I perceive as the truth. Oh, they'll skin you alive. What is he saying, Doctor? Something very unpleasant. That's not the worst. You're going to be finished, Dad. Your career will be ruined. You won't have an ounce of credibility left. Jerry, enough for now. No, it's not enough. They'll get you on contempt. They can even pull obstruction of justice, conspiracy... Al, do you realize you can go to jail? Jerry, he doesn't realize anything of the sort. But it should be obvious It to would him. be, if he were Al Ainsley. Doc, are you crazy, Jerry, too? Jerry, this is no time for anyone to lose his head. Okay, 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 let's be calm, let's be reasonable. How does a thing like this happen? There's no answer. I've, I've done some research, consulted. And the best I can come up with is... Look, at the speed of light, there's no regular sequence of time. The past, the present, the future, everything is mixed and jumbled up. Everything becomes a storm of pure energy. Doc, what can I do to convince you guys... Sometimes, in rare cases, our thoughts, our ideas achieve such intensity that they, too, become a form of energy and carry our minds into this, this raging storm. And minds can be mixed up and thrown from one body into another. I can't believe I'm sitting here listening Whatever to Whatever the reason, he's not Al Ainsley. Now, oh, get a hold of yourself. Jerry, now you can't excite him anymore. I'll throw you out of here. You may not have to throw me out. I want to leave. Now, Al, in exactly three days, you'll have to appear before that committee. If you value your reputation and your freedom, please think up a better story. Or best of all, tell the truth. <laughs> Are you awake, Al? I brought you some tea. This is the first chance I've had to talk with you. Darling, what is it? Are you my wife? I mean, his wife. What are you saying? I'm not your husband. Don't say that. It's true. I know you, darling. I've known you all my life. Who knows you better than I do? I am not Al Ainsley. 
There's someone else, isn't there? Another woman. Please. I knew you were timid, but I didn't think you'd go this far. I have a wife. What? Her name is White Swallow. And we have a son. Al, I don't know what your game is, but you won't get away with it. Gentlemen, this visit of yours is most unusual. I know it is, Senator Adams. I have no right to conduct committee business privately. Senator, we just wanted to acquaint you with certain facts. And... And? Well, please just listen. No matter what you hear, just listen. Then use your own judgment. Go ahead, Al. Senator, I am not Alfred Stewart Ainsley. You're not. I am running bear. I am a Potomac Indian. Well, this is most unusual. Dr. Stitzer and I, we believe that I lived 500 years ago. Somehow, I have occupied the body of Mr. Ainsley. But though I have his body, I have none of his skills. And? And that's all. And this is what you want me to believe, hmm? It's the truth, Senator. You'll be at the committee hearings on Monday morning. Senator... Didn't you hear... Doctor, I don't believe a word of it. It's no use. It's no use. Watch the knife. Watch it constantly. Don't look at your opponent's eyes. Oh, Red Bear, I'll never learn. You may not be running Beaver, but you have his great body, his strength, his agility. I'll tell you what I don't have, his desire to fight. Are you a coward? No. I just don't believe in violence. Strange. I can't kill anybody. Council has already decided, Red Bear. But this will be murder, Chief. He isn't running Beaver. He does not know how to fight. A man who doesn't know how to fight? Impossible. He is not one of us. He's from another time. Well, how does he happen to be here, then? There is a place, Chief, where the soul that belongs to each man is put into his body. Yes, we know that. It is the sacred, haunted place where the mist meets the rocks. There's always thunder there. Evil, malicious spirits have an opportunity to play tricks. And so... I understand. I even believe... But the council has spoken. He does not know how to fight. He will have to learn. <laughs> Keep the knife low and moving. It's no use. I just can't kill anybody. Even to save your own life? Suppose I kill Eagle Wing tomorrow. Then what? At least you'll be alive. To do what? To live out my life here in an alien place doing things that I hate? Fighting, hunting, killing? No, I'm better off dead. <laughs> You'll have to testify before the committee. I can't. You'll be ruined. Well, if that's the only way... Relax. Think. Don't fight against Alfred Ainsley. Accept him. Let his thoughts flow into your brain. Let his knowledge come to you. Why? So you can get past the committee. And then? What do you mean, then? Then what will I do? Live here as Al Ainsley, away from my wife, my son, my friends, my people? Never to hunt, never to fight? To exist in this strange and terrible world, a place I can neither understand nor accept? No. Rather, let me be disgraced. Why do you want to be disgraced? So I can die of shame. Wake up, Running Beaver. Wake up. It's time to start out for the fighting ground. So early? You still refuse to fight him as Running Beaver would? Yes, I refuse. Why? I told you. I want to die. I know why you would want to die in this life. But I don't understand why you would want to die in your other life. What are you saying? What troubled you? You are a man of trouble. I see that. When you walked into the mist, were you troubled? How did you know? I am only guessing. In your other life, did you also want to die? I'm not sure. Perhaps... Perhaps I did want to. Why? Because... Because I would have to say something that would... That... Oh, you couldn't understand. That would have to be something you hate? Yes. Yes, I would have to ruin a man that I had always respected. Did he... Does he deserve to be ruined? Yes. Because he broke faith. And you did not have the courage to do your duty. I... In other words, you are an even greater coward than I thought. Maybe... Would you rather die under Eagle Wing's knife, or... Or what? Or go back. 
Do your part as a man. Face your responsibility. Go back. Testify against... Isn't that what must be done? Isn't that what truth and justice demand? Yes. Then you'll go back. But how? How can I go back? Are you sure you want to? Yes. You'll do what's required? Yes. You believe it with all your heart? Yes. Yes, I believe it. Now I believe it. Then come with me. Where? To the place of mist. The sacred place where you became running beaver. Time to be leaving for the committee meeting. I'm ready. I decided to go with you. Let's get it over with. Tell me, something bothers me. It bothered me that first day when I thought that you had willed yourself into amnesia. I can see how Al Ainsley could have found life intolerable. But you're not Al Ainsley. No. Therefore, my diagnosis was wrong. I don't think I understand. Why was life also intolerable for running beaver? Why were you trying to escape as running beaver? To escape? What was tormenting you? How did you know? Did I guess right? Yes. From what were you trying to escape? I had gone with three others to the Iroquois. As an ambassador. The Iroquois promised peace. I knew it was a lie. My three friends were bribed. On the way home, they plotted to kill me. I was too smart, too strong. I killed them instead. If I told this to the council, I would make enemies. I was afraid. I see. Would you rather die like a man among your own people, if indeed you must die at all, or would you rather die of shame here among strangers? I am wiser now, but it's too late. It's too late for me. I can't go back. Are you willing to face the council? Face them? Defy them? Fight them? Let's go back to this place where the mist covers the rocks. And when we reach it, try, try to go back. All the way back home again. The committee will stand in order. Mr. Ainsley, are you finally prepared to report your findings? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I've studied all the relevant materials, and I am absolutely convinced. I will stake my professional reputation on the fact that the signature is forged. I say this to the council. Three young men of the tribe took bribes from the enemy. I alone refused. They tried to kill me. I killed them instead. I will answer for this deed with my life. If any man here thinks he can take it. At a certain speed, at a certain intensity, at a certain burning level of anxiety or desire, time, space, and spirit can be twisted out of shape or sequence. That's how we might explain it today. On the other hand, there are evil and mischievous spirits who delight in creating misery and confusion. That would be yesterday's explanation. Choose one or the other. Or supply your own. I'll be back shortly. And uh, what's the moral of our little tale? Simply this. Whenever you're desperate for a means of escape from a problem, don't try too hard for an easy way out. You might just be unlucky enough to find it. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Grace Matthews, Arnold Moss, Nat Polan, and Mason Adams. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dreams?